Elders, we cannot let OKK continue his reign of terror in our village. Something must be done to protect our daughters. Absolutely. That scoundrel has hoodwinked numerous women across the nine villages, exploiting widows and married women for monetary and other gains, and leaving a trail of baby mamas in his wake. Moreover, he's recklessly spreading diseases. We cannot turn a blind eye to this dire situation, as the repercussions of Akeke's reckless and promiscuous behavior have now reached our own community, with some women infecting their husbands. We must halt this malevolent influence before it consumes us entirely. I agree. He's taken advantage of too many innocent women. We must put an end to it. But what can we do? He's charming and deceives even the wisest of us. And that handyman job of his gives him unlimited access to our homes. We could curse him. Make it so everyone knows to steer clear of him. Yes, a mark on his body, a warning to all who encounter him. Romans 12, 17 to 19 and 21 says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lith in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. We will need to perform a ritual at the shrine to ensure the curse is potent. I, the chief priest of the mysterious shrine, has spoken. And what about his visits to the bar and eatery? We could slip something into his food and drink. Some of us believe he should pay with his life for what he's done. Death would be too swift. He must suffer greatly before meeting his fate. Perhaps we should just talk to him, warn him of the consequences. Talking won't undo the damage he's caused. We must act decisively. Agreed. Let us proceed with the curse and ensure Okiki faces justice for his deeds. A few days later. It's a new day. What's this burning sensation on my face and body? What's happening to me? My face, it feels like it's on fire. Maybe it's just sunburn. Okek rushes to the mirror and sees the blisters forming on his skin, panic rising. Oh no, no, no. This can't be happening. Okek tries different remedies to ease the pain, but nothing works. Okay, Kay. You missed breakfast and lunch. Are you okay? What's wrong? I'm not coming out, mother. Just leave me alone. Mum knock and barges into the room carrying the spare keys. You forget that this is my house and I have the spare keys to your room. KK, what's going on? Oh my goodness, what happened to your eyes and your face? Okek breaks down, unable to speak. <laughs> Luanga, come quickly, something's wrong with OKK. What's the matter, Nakakan? Look at OKK, his face, his skin. We need to get him to the clinic right away. OKK, get ready to go to the clinic. At the clinic. We've never seen anything like this. We think it's spiritual. I'm sorry. There's not much we can do for you, okay, okay, except to manage the pain. Please, isn't there anything else? You're reaping what you've sown, okay, okay. You better start getting your affairs in order. Surely, your days are numbered. <laughs> How can you say that? Everyone knows what sort of person okay, okay is. Pray that this strange illness doesn't consume him. Personally, I think he's been bewitched. Someone or some people in the village are tired of him. I think he stepped on a tiger's tail. No one asked for your opinion. Just do your job, nurse. Enough. We need to focus on getting Akeke the help he needs. Yes. Okek, amidst tears, 
begins to pray for the first time in his life, seeking forgiveness and guidance. A few months later. Come on, okay Kay, it's time to get some fresh air. You can't keep locking yourself in your room like this. But, mother, what if people see me? What will they say? Don't worry about what others think. You need to take care of yourself. Besides, it's important to get some sunlight every morning. Okek reluctantly agrees and follows Nakak and outside. They walk into a forest glade. Look, OKK, there are some familiar faces. Why don't you go say hello? I don't think that's a good idea. Nonsense. Just be yourself. Okek approaches the women, but as they notice his appearance, they either flee or start whispering among themselves. Is that Okiki? What happened to him? I heard he's got some kind of disease. Look at his face. Okek's heart sinks as he overhears the gossip. Okiki is now a shadow of his former self. How the mighty have fallen. This is witchcraft. They also put some concussions in his food and drinks at the village by Anditeri. Some of the village elders told me what they did to him. I saw such a case only once during my childhood. Only the Lord can break the curse. There is no known antidote for his skin condition. So, what you are saying is that OKK's condition is permanent? No condition is permanent. The Lord can deliver him from all evil, sicknesses and diseases. However, he needs to genuinely repent of all his sins and surrender all to God. Only time will tell. I hope this serves as a warning for all wicked and promiscuous folks who don't fear God. Shush, here comes Nakakan. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you know what's wrong with my son? No, I can only speculate. Oh, yeah, it seems that your son has a rare disease. You should be careful. It's best to keep your distance from him to avoid contracting it yourself. What? I had no idea. Thank you for letting me know. Nakakan agrees, feeling a mix of shock and sadness as she realizes the gravity of Okek's condition. Mum Nakakand, so here you are. Namara, my daughter-in-law, you know that you will always be my daughter even though you nullified your marriage to OKK. I didn't know that you were back in Mono. How are my grandkids? By God's grace, the children and I are very well. The boys are now in their second year at university and Kansime will be finishing high school this year. I am very happy to hear that. Mum Nakakand, I brought some groceries for you. When Namara visited the village, she stopped by Nakakand's house to deliver groceries. To her surprise, she discovered Okek sporting alarming scars, large holes on his face, and an unusual complexion. Thank you, Namara. Let's go to the lounge so we can chat. Namara notices Okek's changed appearance and is taken aback. What happened to Okeke? His face. It has come to our attention that some of the villagers cursed him for his sins. They convened at the so-called mysterious shrine to lay curses on my son. I admit that my son has done a lot of bad things but who is without sin, and two wrongs don't make a right. No one wants anything to do with him now. What? Namar listens as Nakak and explains how the village elders took action against Okek's behavior. Hi Akeke, I am sorry about what happened. No one deserves this. I am experiencing the consequences of my sins. Being confined to this room has allowed me ample opportunity for introspection. I've come to the realization that I've been following the wrong path all along. Instead of taking responsibility, I've been attributing my mistakes to external forces like demons. Furthermore, I associated myself with the wrong crowd, indulged in substance abuse, and showed disrespect towards women. I lacked fear and genuine belief in God. It's evident that my poor decisions have brought me to this unfortunate state. As the nurse pointed out, my time is limited, and I am determined to devote my remaining days to repentance for my sins and seeking liberation from all forms of evil. I heard from the children how your lives were transformed after experiencing deliverance. I'm fasting and praying for that same grace to come upon my life. I can confidently say that I am a different person now. I'm not surprised. He brought this upon himself. 
Namar leaves, feeling a mixture of pity and relief that justice has been served. Deep down Namar knew what she had to do. She had to seek out her pastor and other church members to visit Okek's compound and pray for his deliverance. Mum Nakak and agreed and said that she'd fast and pray for her son as well. Namara wanted nothing to do with Okek, but she was convinced that he was being tormented and controlled by malevolent spirits. Despite her reluctance, she resolved to do everything in her power to assist Okek, particularly now that he appeared to be sincerely repentant. Pastor, I believe Okeke needs spiritual intervention. Can you and some church members visit his compound and pray for him? Of course, Namara. We'll gather a team and go pray for him. Thank you. Nakakand agrees to join in prayer and fasting for Okek's deliverance. I'll be praying fervently for him. He's in a dark place, and he needs God's light. A few days later, the pastors and church members visit Okek's compound, praying fervently for his deliverance. Okeke, we're here to pray for you. We believe God can set you free from whatever is tormenting you. Thank you, Pastor. Psalm 107, 20 KJV says, He sent his word, and healed them, and delivered them from the destructions. Matthew 6, 13 says, And led us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And John 4, 23-24 says, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I come before you in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. I lift up a keke before your throne of grace, knowing that you are the almighty God who has power over all things, including the forces of darkness. Lord, I pray that you would deliver a keke from every evil spirit that seeks to torment him. I rebuke the spirits of lust, fornication, adultery, lying, deceit, theft, sickness, promiscuity, and all other forms of darkness, including evil soul ties, that have ensnared him. By the authority of Jesus Christ, I command these spirits to leave Akeke's life and never return. Lord, I ask that you break every chain that binds Akeke and set him free from the bondage of sin. Let your light shine into the darkest corners of his heart and mind, bringing healing and restoration. Fill him with your Holy Spirit, empowering him to resist temptation and walk in righteousness. Father, erase Akeke's name from every evil book and blot out his transgressions with the blood of Jesus. Let him experience the fullness of your forgiveness and mercy. Align his life with your perfect will and purpose, guiding him on the path of righteousness. Lord, I pray that you would turn Akeke's situation around for your glory. May his life be a testimony to your transformative power and grace. Help him to cling to your word as the standard for his life, finding strength and guidance in its teachings. Thank you, Lord, for hearing this prayer. I trust in your faithfulness and love. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. As the prayers continue over time, it becomes evident that Okek's deliverance hinges on his genuine surrender to God. Okeke, to be truly set free. You must genuinely and wholeheartedly surrender to God, ask for forgiveness, and repent of your sins. I am ready, Pastor. In a moment of desperation, Okek finally opens his heart to God, experiencing a transformative change within himself. I am free and it shall be permanent in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. I surrender all to you. Help me to become more like you. In your precious name, I pray. Amen. To God be the glory. We encourage you to come to church every weekend. One of our elders will be visiting you for praise and worship at your house once a week for the next three months. Thank you, Pastor. I can't explain it, but I feel light. It's as if a heavy burden has been lifted off my shoulders. I believe that I am now a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for watching this episode of Namara. Watch out for the final episode. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, 
we invite you to do so. Subscribing ensures that you'll be notified whenever we release new content. Also, we'd appreciate it if you'd like and share our content. Thank you for your support. In the end, Okek's journey from a deceitful, destructive path to one of repentance and redemption serves as a powerful reminder of the consequences of one's actions and the possibility of transformation through genuine repentance. His affliction, brought about by the curse and his own wrongdoing, becomes a catalyst for spiritual awakening and change. Through the support of his family, particularly his mother Nakak and, and the intervention of compassionate individuals like Nibmara and the pastors, Okek finds the strength to confront his sins, seek forgiveness, and embrace a new path guided by faith and righteousness. The lesson learned from Okek's story is that no matter how far one strays, it is never too late to turn back and seek redemption. His journey underscores the importance of accountability, repentance, and genuine spiritual transformation in overcoming the consequences of past misdeeds and embracing a new life aligned with God's will. Before we conclude, we would like to share the following verses with you. Kindly note that the verses were taken from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Ezekiel 18.30 says, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent, and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Acts 3.19 says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Luke 13, 3 says, I tell you, nay, but, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Psalm 103, 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Isaiah 1.18 says, Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Psalm 32, 8 says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go, I will guide thee with mine eye. Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, an acceptable, and perfect, will of God. And 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you humbly, acknowledging our shortcomings and the consequences of our actions. We thank you for your boundless mercy and grace that allows us to come to you in repentance and find forgiveness. Lord, we ask for your guidance and strength as we navigate the challenges of life. Help us to recognize the destructive paths we may be treading and grant us the courage to turn away from sin and towards righteousness. May your Holy Spirit work within us to transform our hearts and minds, aligning them with your willing purposes. Grant us the wisdom to seek forgiveness from those we have wronged and the humility to accept your forgiveness. Help us to extend grace and compassion to others as you have shown to us. Lord, we lift up those who are suffering the consequences of their actions, praying for their repentance and restoration. May they experience the freedom and joy that comes from walking in obedience to you. We also pray for those who have been hurt by the sins of others, that they may find healing and peace in your presence. Grant them the strength to forgive as they have been forgiven. Finally, Lord, we commit our lives into your hands, trusting in your unfailing love and faithfulness. May we continually seek your guidance and walk in obedience to your word, bringing glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.